Hey, my legion. How y'all doing today? I'm here today to review Return to Bloodfront Lake. Now, way back 2016, I, I found Terror Bloodfart Lake on the OV Guide. I forgot all about the movie. I remember I heard about the movie. I can't remember where I heard about the movie. I saw some ad about it somewhere. And this came out in 2009. I remember talking to my friend Ryan about maybe 2010. He said, I remember my friend Ryan Platt said he saw like the first 10 minutes and he shut off. It was so bad, bad acting and stuff like that. Okay, and I, I'd never been able to find it anywhere. And I think I started looking on YouTube, uh, and they had like an intro for it and like um, a trailer, and it looked very good, it looked entertaining, like something I'd like. And then I saw it on OV Guide on Comedy. So, oh man, I checked it out, and I really enjoyed it. It's really funny, but very, very stupid, but funny. And I reviewed it back in 2016, and then, uh, what do you think about it? Uh, that Amazon a thing on Roku is really a, has a lot of stuff on it. Uh, and it's easier to look up stuff. You, know, you can look up stuff through category and stuff, or you can put a type, part of a title. And I found it had a sequel, Return to Bloodfart Lake, because I had trouble finding Return to Bloodfart Lake, which was made in 2012. And I was happy. I finally found it last night. I decided to... Well, I mean, this the review will be up a few days after that, but I found it. Uh, Friday night. I watched some of it. I, want, I mean, I wanted to watch the first one again. because I started watching the second one. I said, I gotta watch the first one again. Cause, you know, just uh, get that vibe back. Um, how silly. Yeah, I did. I watched the second one. Uh, I watched some of it Friday. And then I, I got tired. I went to bed. And I watched the rest of it this morning. And I really enjoyed it. I mean, it's not as good as uh, the first one. It's not as fun quite as funny, but a lot of the characters, just as silly, it seemed like they had like a bigger, a little bit bigger budget to it, and they had uh, better, uh, they had more locations, and even though it's shorter than the first one, the first one 76 minutes, this is 71 minutes, and I really enjoyed it, it took a while to find, uh, for Jimmy to really pop up on screen again, but the characters were really goofy and over the top, and they had that the one biggest difference with the guy who started that, Chris, uh, the guy from Fright Rags, the t-shirt company, he was kind of like, spoke like more normal in the first, and this one is like, Jimmy, we must get out of here, like that, and it was really overdoing it, hilarious. Um, like I said, you didn't see the kill until much later, in the movie, and it wasn't as bloody as the first one. There's one kill that bought these two guys, um, and this one guy and this girl, I don't know what happened. Either they uh, didn't do the effects or something like that. Because it showed like the guy and they showed him. And they're talking but it showed him pausing like this. It was a pause video shot. It had, and then a girl like a couple weird video shots. Seemed like they didn't do all the effects or they just uh, a cheated or something. But uh, it was weird. that I guess that the guy said this is the last production for low budget uh, pictures. That uh, guy who Chris Seaver. Uh, I looked up it online, online. And he said it wasn't fun anymore. He said he wanted to get paid. He was being shunned by the studios, and then uh, you know wasn't he was just made move to get his rent, and he decided to close the company. I guess that was the last movie, so this might be the last Blood Fort Lake movie. I I really enjoyed it though. It wasn't as good as the first one. Um, I liked how self aware it was. Also about uh, horror films too, because they had a couple of uh, things like this. Guy said, "Oh, you on Fright Rags?" And said, "What's with all the Evil Dead and Nightmare on Elm Street stuff?" I mean, I love those movies, but other T-shirt coming to just doing the same thing. And he said, "Why don't you do more obscure stuff like a special thing for Slaughter High, or like a special edition for Waxwork or Warlock or uh, or Crime Wave, the same Raimi movie?" That I mean, I thought I mean they know their movies too. But they had some neat characters. They had uh, a guy like Vin Diesel. It was really funny. And they had a really bizarre fight sequence at the end. Uh, and even the guy broke character. I didn't know spoilers, though, who played the killer, Jimmy. Said He took his mask and said, this is, a, this is the strangest fight scene I've ever been in. Or something like that. Put it back. And you could see, like, it was at nighttime. And they had, like, a panning round shot. And then you saw, like, car headlights. So they just had a car come and show the headlights. Two cards have their headlights on in the fight scene. Um, I really liked it. It, it, it. I don't think it was as good as the first one. Not as funny, but still 
really hilarious, but not as funny as the first one. But and the jokes are still as goofy. Um, like I said, it just just wasn't as good. But I mean, but I mean, a lot of people. Boy, I got lots of comments when I reviewed the first one. I said this movie sucked. It was awful. And I know just Christie said she tried to watch. She going it was so bad. I said, I told just Christie. I said that uh, I'm gonna be doing her a sequel review. The sequel pretty soon. <laughs> I'm waiting for Tony Talent to make me a thumbnail, too. But I'll put this up whenever I can. But I give it an 8.5 eight out of 10 for Return to Blood Fart. Like, a, a very entertaining movie. But not quite as good as the first one. But like I said, that uh, Chris... See, if I'm not, not mistaken, said that... Uh, what's it? Make sure I've got the right name. Chris Seaver. Yeah, I was right. Okay. Yeah, he, uh, yeah, it's Chris Seaver. So I hope you like this review, everybody. Until next time, please, take care of my lead.